So today we're going to learn just a little bit about creating a menu system. Do you see this menu right here? This is up, down, right? So we, we could take full advantage of this space here without having a menu. When we need to see the menu, we can just click there and go to our menu. So let's go ahead and see how to do this. It's actually quite simple using pop-ups. So stay tuned. We're going to jump right to it. So the first thing we need to do within our Power App is create the pop-up itself. So this is a, a pre-existing menu that I had right here on the top of the screen. And there's lots of menus, kind of busy. So I like to try to hide it so that I have more space for my meeting notes and action items. So to do that, what I need to be able to do is create a pop-up. And so here under meeting notes, I'm just gonna go ahead on the on hidden section create my variable called menu2. I'm going to call it false. Now, one thing that I don't want to do, I don't want to name the variable the same as the group name. So try to avoid doing that. Okay, that just creates, makes it a little more complicated. The second thing I want to do is create these icons right here. So this one here, I just went to icons here and went to the up down arrows. So you could use any icon you want. You could use a hamburger bar if you wanted to. You could do whatever you want. I just wanted to keep it simple. So I did little arrows. Okay. The third thing you want to do is copy down this, the measurements of that arrow. So X is at two, Y is at three width and height 24 by 16. And the reason why is so that when you're using it, notice here, it goes up, it goes down. It almost looks like it's flipping on its axis. It's not, it's just the same we're just kind of flipping it at the same location and overwriting it. So, so you want to do that. That's kind of the next step, if you will. Then you're going to need to create a group. Now, I'm a big believer in um, labeling things. So I like to make sure everything's labeled. And especially when you're talking about things that are a little more complicated and you have different types of links and launches and things of that nature, it's just better to label it so you know which one you're working on at which time, okay? Then we wanna group everything together. But before we go to the grouping, I wanna show you this. This right here is my button, right? My set button, but right behind it is a square. And so what I did was I just copied this image header right here, the big one here, and I put, I copied it and made it a square and basically what I'm doing is I'm covering up the down arrow that's sitting right behind this. And then I move all of these to the front. So, you know, you can do a right click, right? Do a right click and go reorder, bring to front. So I want to make sure that it's on the very front so that I can see it when this is up, when menu two is up. Now, to close, I'll talk about opening and closing here in a minute. We're just going to flip the variables. Before we go there, we're going to have to take this group that we created. Now, remember, creating a group is really easy. You just click on multiple items and you say group. Now, group isn't showing here because this is a group. So let me show you another one. So here, we want to create other items. Okay. Then we just hit right and we say group. That's how we group items. That's what I've done here. Now, why would we group the items? First of all, it kind of cleans this up a little bit, which I like. But more importantly, I want to change the visible to the variable. So that variable is menu two. So I want that always to be set to menu two. So whatever the variable menu two is, whether it's true or false, true meaning it's visible, false meaning it's not, it's going to be this variable menu two. And then now setting this button makes it very easy. So here, when I select this button, it's going to say menu two, turn that to false. So if I hit play, click there, boom, now it's gone. Why? Because everything inside of this group called menu two list is set to menu two as a variable. And I just reset the variable to false. And so it's not going to be visible. If I click on this guy here, notice it's set to true. So now when I click on that one, it gives me back the menu and it just kind of creates this look and feel. So very easy to do. You can move the other things underneath there as well. So let's just say here, we'll go just a little more here. We'll go to the gallery. Well, let's go to the search bar. 
we're going to move the search bar up there okay and then we'll take the gallery and we'll stretch the gallery up there too okay so we're gonna to have to do some other adjustments on here we'll move these guys up there too okay so now let's see what happens when we pull down that menu pull down the menu you can still see the items back there that's because I have to play with the settings on what's in front and what's in back but I can do that but notice I can't select them right now because I'm in the top menu see I can't I can't get back well I guess I could go to search but I can't these aren't visible for me so in order to hide those while this is up I need to be able to reset all of that information so but when it's down now I have full visibility so for me I'm just gonna push all of these to the back I'm gonna send all these to the back let's see how that works for us so it's gonna say here reorder and we're gonna say send to back let's see how that works so we're gonna hit play go look at that now those items are still under there and when I go back I can still search I can add and I can save but when it's down now I just see the menu pretty magical all right well that's about it on the simple way of creating a pop-down menu uh, that keeps your work environment a little bit bigger and uh, makes your screens look a little bit nicer